all right welcome back so we thought we'd take a little bit of time and talk about the topic of finances so we get a lot of questions and asking us how much we've spent on our containers so we thought we'd do a video on how much we've spent so far um, from our containers to our material to everything um, we give you a rundown of what we've done maybe what we do better to save money um, we're going to break down some of the expenses that we had. Um, kind of, she, we, she kind of did a lot of the uh, budgeting and financing in categories. So we'll kind of give a highlight of what we spent on each subject, each category, such as plumbing, um, lumber and wood and things like that in different, different sections. And we'll also tell you what the cheapest category we've spent on so far later on. And what the most expensive. <laughs> All right, so, so far, we spent a grand total of almost $14,000, but that is including our containers. So, $13,815.95. Um, as far as the house goes, I think that's actually really cheap, but um, we could have saved money other places, but I think we've done really good. We've been using Habitat for Humanity for a lot of our stuff and then people have given us stuff for free or we found it on Craigslist and all different places so it's been it's actually been pretty good yeah so uh, we live in Central Texas and uh, Habitat for Humanity was a local organization that um, it's kind of like a goodwill for lumber and supplies and uh, building materials so they get donated a lot of uh, lumber and supplies and stuff like that and we go there and check out and see what they got. Sometimes it's hit or miss. Go there and check, see if they got it. They don't have it, then we gotta go to the store and pay regular price for some of these things. Um, and that's kind of what, what we're doing. And then we also are, you know, we get, uh, like she said, we get... Um, I, I found things for, like, give an example. We use bed frames for the uh, window framing. So he welded the bed frames and talking about your typical full size, queen size, king size bed frame. And we use those to weld around to put our windows in. And yep. those we, most of them we got for free. People were giving them away. So yep. that was easier. Um, the containers, we spent 6,000 on the containers, so 3,000 each. And then the crane cost us about $700 to get it from Houston to here, um, which was actually, not the crane, the crane was, yeah. The crane was them putting in, in place, so the 6000 was including the um, travel. Um, which, which was interesting because we are about a three-hour drive from Houston, and that's where we got the containers because they happen to be cheaper to get them there, as well as the transportation three hours away. It turned out to be cheaper, so the guy was able to come here. We saw we showed that as one of our first videos. Came in here with the fifth wheel, pulled it off, drove it all the way from Houston to here, and that was cheaper than some of the places that are literally five miles down the road. So um, we kind of looked around for, for deals like that, and uh, thing. Um, moving on to the next thing was the the lumber. Um, so we've got a lot of wood on the interior framing and things like that. Uh, we did try to save on spacing some of it out because it's not really there for support. It's mainly there to make walls, something we have the sheetrock to put to. So we were able to save a little bit. On, on that and then at the same time some that sometimes came back and bit us in the behind um, because of spacing uh, we didn't plan correctly for where certain uh, corners were going to corners go. were going to go <laughs> intersections of walls we had to add pieces for sheetrock and things like that so when we do the next side uh, this back side which will be the kitchen area behind us as well as the upstairs to come in the future uh, we'll have that planned out and uh, drawn out better so that we can save uh, on some of the lumber that we ended up having to buy extras for. Yeah, because we ended up having to do Home Depot runs quite a bit for one board here, two boards there, because the sheetrock didn't have anything to screw into. So just a little bit more planning, but this is the first time we've done this, so we're learning as we're going. Um, the lumber, we spent about $930 on lumber so far. So... We still have to build the middle section that's going to be the living room and we'll, we know we'll spend way more than that on lumber there, but I think about $900 is pretty good to 
finish one container and we we probably won't need that much in the other container because we won't have a bunch of twists and turns we actually have three rooms in this other container um and then the, the other side is only going to be one solid room it's going to be the dining room and the kitchen all one open space so we won't need as much lumber there but it's about nine hundred dollars uh, electrical and heating and air so we did have to plan ahead and put our air ducts in the bedrooms as well as plan for it to come into the living room as well as the electrical so we spent a little bit more there because we had to buy the um, the junction box the vents what's the electrical panel all of that had to be um, purchased and we did three-way switches in the bathroom and that was a little bit more expensive so about fifteen hundred dollars on electrical by itself yeah and that's just for the electrical lines that I needed ran in this section before we put the ceiling and tie and uh, sheetrock up so that includes a lot of the uh, the 10-3 the 10-2 the um, and the 12-3 wire that we had to use for the rest of the house because it needs to be ran already for the junction box, like she mentioned, that's going to be put here. And then once we build out the living room, we'll tap into there and start wiring to the rest of the house. So that's what, um, what she's talking about. All right, so the next category is sheetrock and insulation. So the insulation, we originally wanted to do spray foam. And we'll probably do spray foam later, but it is very expensive and we didn't have the money to do it on this side. Um, so we did go with um, batting and we use the um, R30 for the ceiling, which is really expensive too. I say really expensive because we're cheap. <laughs> but um, it's more expensive. It was the more expensive, or was the R30 that goes in the ceiling to make sure that you have um, for the sun and everything. And then R19 and R13 um, went in the walls, depending on if it was an outside wall or if it was an interior wall. Uh, we did that. And we hit about 9.43 is what we spent on um, sheetrock. And the sheetrock, uh, it was the ceiling sheetrock is heavier, so it was that was the more expensive was the the ceiling sheetrock. Yeah. And then when she talked about the insulation, we didn't insulate interior walls um, no. with the R13. It just ended up being that some of the walls that we have on certain parts of the house, because of where we live and our geography, that. Certain sides of the house don't get the the sun in the summer uh, the winter time because of where we are from the equator. Um, so we focused a lot on those sides that are going to get a lot more sun that'll be that'll be warmer. And then some of the sides towards the inner portions of the house, meaning that they're not going to be directly exposed to the outside. They will be outside. We tried to you know use some of that there because we ended up getting some that we didn't need but we were gonna like use it somewhere oh and then we also use foam board so to add an extra layer we use foam board in the walls and in the ceilings all exterior walls and all um, the whole ceiling we use foam board first and then we put the sheet um, the batting yeah so you probably saw a lot of that in the previous videos if you didn't feel free to go back and check them out um we have another category. She called it extras. <laughs> like it was not needed, but I guess this is stuff we needed just in a miscellaneous category labeled extras. Well, extras is, you don't realize how nickel and diming stuff is. Um, paint. I mean, I didn't know what category to put that in. So paint, the carpet padding, um, nails, the lights all the little tiny things that you go oh I didn't know that I needed it and you got to run to the store five dollars here three dollars there it adds up very quickly we hit fifteen hundred dollars in this category and that's literally because I, I did a, a fake brick wall in the bathroom so those panels are in my extra category um, I thought that was real brick <laughs> I mean, it's just it, the blinds. All of that is in the extras category. So about $1,500. Um, when you got to run to the store to get something you didn't realize you needed, it got put in the extras category. So um, another category was plumbing. So plumbing is a lot more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Plumbing actually has been our highest category so far. Um, I didn't realize how much a bathroom costs to build. 
and because we built our bathroom from scratch we spent almost two thousand dollars so 1987 is what we spent on all our plumbing stuff because we had to get a manifold we had to get the water heater like a lot of money was spent there <laughs> yeah so like you said we had we did in the previous videos we had the pex piping um in installed and things like that um there are some cheaper routes that we could have done to cut some uh, costs certain places uh, sometimes they'll use uh, a single line of PEX pipe to run to like the whole bathroom and then it'll branch off to the sink, toilet, shower. Um, but we decided to run, uh, I decided that what we wanted to do was to run one line to each fixture just to kind of help with the evenness of the uh, the water flow and deal with any type of a pressure that we have. And then in my, the manifold that we have, we can shut down each individual one uh, specifically. So I can shut off the water to the sink from the manifold the toilet, the shower, or anything for any type of extra repairs. Since we're putting it in, we can go ahead and add it now. It would be easier. Um, we have the tankless water heater that we installed. Um, we're still trying to check it out. It's a, uh, it, it works pretty quickly. It's not um, any, you know, we don't get. This is the tankless system, but it, this, so we don't get water faster than a hot water heater because it still takes a while for the water to travel from where it is over here to the faucet, um, but. It's supposed to be cheaper because it's not keeping the, the you know, several, you know, 50, 30, 40 gallons of water uh, heated all time, whether it's being used or not. So we'll see how this one goes on this side and see if uh, the smaller unit that we have is going to work um, or if we need a, a larger unit and uh, go from there on that. So that's one of the things that we're, we're kind of experimenting on with that. So it isn't instant hot water because they hear that all the time, it, but it is continuous hot water well right now ours is not continuous hot water because we need a different breaker right uh, because the one that we have isn't strong enough so it keeps popping the breaker is am i using the right term it is it's tripping the breaker um so i need to figure out what it is it's a, it's a double pole 30 amp breaker that we have it connected to um and it's tripping it and so i need to figure out why it's doing that because it shouldn't be tripping the 30 amp breaker and we'll, I'll be looking into that later on to address that issue. But the goal for a tankless, the reason why I wanted it, is because it's supposed to be continuous hot water. So if somebody wants to sit in the shower forever and take long, long showers, I can take a shower later and not have cold water. It's supposed to be constant hot water. Okay, we'll not get too personal. Uh, now, earlier, I mentioned that we have a category that we spent the least amount on. And you haven't seen any of this in any of the videos because we're not in that category yet. So, it is the appliances. We have a dishwasher, an oven, a stove top, a countertop stove. We actually have two ovens. They're both in walls. So one is a uh, double oven. Uh, it's what is it? A, a convection. It's an oven it's a, and a convection yeah. microwave or some combo that goes in the wall. And then we also have a brand new oven that goes in the wall that we got for a really good deal for. A no, company. we got that bought for us. Yeah, we that one. Someone bought it for us, but they bought it and it was super cheap, and they thought about us. So. Um, it was about $150 that they spent on it, and it's a brand new um, in the wall in the oven. Wall oven. But what we've spent has been we got all of our stuff from Habitat for Humanity, and it was actually really nice stuff. It was either stainless steel or black. That's what I wanted in my kitchen, and we were able to find the um, the stove that goes on in your island because I want an island in my kitchen and. We spent $185 total for everything that we just said. I was $185. And my kitchen, only thing that I'm missing is I do want a new refrigerator, but I have one. But, um, and then we really want to do the sink, um, what is it called? The, 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 the what? The garbage disposable. The garbage disposable. We want to do that deep farmhouse kitchen sink. Um, and I haven't found one. Habitat hasn't come up with one yet. But... $185 for all my appliances is a really good deal. But when we get over to the other side, you'll be able to see that. But that is our lowest category right now is that we've spent so far. 
All right, so the other thing that I personally found when we were doing the bathroom is I'm all about the cheap. I'm all about not spending money, trying to spend the less. Well, that's not always the best option. I learned that with the bathroom. So we use the uh, Dora Rock for our backer board for the shower, and I got it because it was the cheapest. It was about $10 a board, and I was cal calculating that we were going to need all these boards, and I didn't want to spend that. I did not like the, the Dura Rock. Uh, it was easy to cut, but that's because when you screw it in, I mean, it just crumbles. It, any edges just crumbled. Um, the hardy board, backer board, that we end up getting in the end, that part of our now shower is Dura Rock, the other part is hardy board. Majority of it is hardy board. Um, it was about $14 a board, and it was so much better. Um, the cut of it did have to be done with a saw, but it was just so much better. I didn't have all these holes that I had to figure out and try to make extra little slits and all this different stuff. It was just so much better. So sometimes the cheapest isn't better, but I learned that and we'll, we'll see from here on out what, how cheap I go. Yeah. So the, uh, so on the board, um, the, the door, the door rock is more kind of a, like a more of a it's like more like a rock base it's pretty like compressed rock i don't know exactly what it is but it's a little more it's brittle in the sense that like when you get a jagged edge it it can start to crumble and get away from you um the backer board is more solid similar like closer to sheet rock so you, when you do get a cut it, you can get a lot nicer cut um like she was saying um the dual rock is it can be easier to cut because once you score you can kind of break it but if it's not perfect, then you kind of get a jagged edge. But for us, we like the, uh, the the hardy backer board better. So when we get ready to do our tile for the uh, kitchen, I definitely will be using hardy backer board there, um, just because it was going around, you know, little what when you went around the um, the spout, he got perfect, you know, circles and stuff like that too. Um, but by the way. All of our tile we got for free, so that we didn't have to pay for. We found that. Somebody was giving it away. So that's the, that's the gist. We get a lot of questions on how much we've spent, how much we've bought, spent on the container. So we thought we'd do a video to kind of let you guys know that, let you know that, you know, what we've learned so far from as far as finances. We'll probably do another video on... A lot of the mistakes that we've made so far, um, some a lot of them were easy to cover up or to turn it into something else. But we'll do a video on that and how we're we either going to fix it or we have fixed it. Yeah, um, that also uh, goes for a lot of people who have asked questions about the foundation, the pillars being off. Yes, we have not addressed that yet because um, it hasn't been... We're not on that side where the most of the problems were at. So we'll be getting to that later on. Um, probably the next couple of videos or next few weeks probably. We'll be looking into it and seeing, seeing how, uh, showing how I'm going to fix that. All right. So that's it for this video. It's starting to get dark. So we're going to uh, head in. So like and subscribe. We really need those subscriptions. Um, we do have an Etsy page that we're trying to uh, making jewelry. Um, we're trying to get um, get this funded a little bit faster as well as our Patreon page. And I'm going to link all of that on the um, video underneath on the video. So we'll see you next time. Bye.